Going to call the meeting to order. This evening we have, I'm sorry, two new members whose names I'm going to struggle with, so I'm going to ask Conti. What's your first name? Christopher. Christopher Conti, to my right. Veronica Dibonese, to my right. And uh, Simple. Yep. Richard Simple. Richard Simple, on my left. Our town planner, on my left. And myself, Jim Ekobachi. That gives us, just so that everybody starts out on the same foot, that gives us four members of the board here, anybody that wishes to continue because they prefer to sit in front of a four-member board, stick your hand up now so that we don't have to make you sit here for a long time. Can I just wait and talk to my client? You can wait and talk to your client. Um, he already called me today and told me his position on that. But go ahead and make the phone call, and then we'll, and then we'll continue. Okay, everybody else is willing to go forward? We'll go back to things in order according to the agenda. And starting out with preliminary, we don't have any minutes to review yet because no of the, okay. <clears throat> and regarding the, um, the Churchill continued hearing under section five here, just for everybody's edification, I did review the video from last week's meeting just this afternoon. So I'll be able to sit on that if they chose to go forward. So going back to number three here, we've got our roll call. Going back to number three, one, 419 LDE Holdings, DBA Trade Routes. Um, Jim, yep. can we get agendas for this? Do we have agendas? Um, in, no, agenda no agenda in your folder. folder. It was, is it underneath? If I don't, I don't see anything. Okay, again, we're talking about trade routes. They're here for a request of a minor modification. This is regarding 6th Statue Lane, which appears on map 108, lot 1006Q1. Sir, identify yourself. Mr. Chair, for the record, my name is Bob Rogers with GAF Engineering. Uh, with me here is Jesse Pitts uh, from Trade Routes. Go ahead, state your, um, state your request. So we're asking uh, that the changes to the design plans be considered a minor modification and require no hearing. So what I've, I've highlighted, uh, this is the, the previous plan that was approved. I've submitted a, a cover letter with four changes, um, which we consider very minor. But, so these are the existing equipment. These are the formerly proposed equipment pads in front of the building. So, so there was no sidewalk, and these were equipment pads that are a little smaller than what they actually need. Equipment for utilities, for? HVAC, okay. generator pad, um, transformer pad. So this is the extent of the changes that we're requesting be considered minor. It's the extension of a five-foot concrete sidewalk. The equipment pads get larger. Because the equipment pads are larger, we need a small drainage system to go around it mm -hmm. and to keep the, the storm water going in the swale where it was going before. And then we also have a, um, it's a five foot diameter by 13 foot high. It's a rainwater storage collection tank. So that, that rainwater storage tank sits at the corner of the building. The, above grade. Above grade. Yep. And the, and the gutters from the building will go right into it and then that'll be used uh, for watering of the plants. So that's, that's the sum total of the changes. I, I handed out half size plans, um, a full set of plans that we revised. There's just a, there's a detail of that little drain basin and a detail of the emitter at the end, but, but this is the change that we're requesting in blue and green versus gotcha. what we had in blue. All right. So my first question would be, why does the pad need to get bigger? I'm not, I'm not saying I object or agree. I'm just curious the, the reason for enlarging the pad. So we, so we do permitting drawings typically, and so we get a site plan review special permit, and, and then we go to bid phase, construction phase. And you said, and oops, so the pad's not big enough. Exactly. Correct. Okay, yep. I got it. 
And the sidewalk just means that when you guys go out there to pull the leaves off the air conditioner, you won't wear a hole in the grass. Sure. And yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. I, I would personally consider it a minor modification. I'm going to uh, look to my left. Uh, how do you react to this, Richard? I, I agree. I, I, I... Okay. And um, Christopher? I think it's a mo uh, minor modification. Uh, also. Veronica? Um, you mentioned that you need to have drainage pads around uh, what you're proposing to replace <clears throat> what had previously been approved. So were there drainage around the previous? No, what, um, there's an existing swale in the area. So basically the runoff from the abutter comes, comes onto this property and there's just a shallow swale that takes the water to the back. And so when, when the uh, condenser pad get, gets bigger, you know, it's a potential impediment. So we have just a little area drain here. It's just a six inch drain. And then we have a crushed stone trench and, a, and it's got a perforated pipe in it. So that makes sure that any water that would want a pond as a place to go. Pads. So there was, but let me ask you, because I'm sorry, I don't have the, the previous, I don't believe. So no, I, I can't see that that, that well. Um, so. Right. This, this, was, this was previous, and there was plenty of room everywhere for the runoff just to go the way it goes today. And, um, and that, we, you know, it's really just a safety factor. The soils are so good out there, there shouldn't be a problem, but we need to make sure that there isn't going to be a problem. And we need to make sure that the runoff gets directed to the same location as it's going today. Yeah, and I agree. That's, all, that's what I just wanted to see what the Well, Veronica is looking at that as a side note. Uh, it's, it's, it's total curiosity. Say that again? Uh, me, a total curiosity. Got nothing to do with yay, nay, or I don't care. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, the rain barrel. So is that, it, I've heard some, like a drain Scuttlebutt, off. that you have to have permission to collect water off the roof. Is, 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 and Just I think so it, it, it may permit a DEP uh, permit to, to collect that rainwater. So until we get that permit, if, if it's necessary, that water from that rain barrel will be pumped to the swale. Yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. And, and you really do have to go say, may I? Okay. You do. Um, with, with rainwater, with condensate water, you don't. Okay. With rainwater, you do. Okay, and that is that specific to your use, or is that in it's Massachusetts? It's Massachusetts, everybody. Yep. If I wanted to put a rain barrel in my backyard yes. and water my garden, yes. I'm supposed to go to the DEP and say, "Can I save the water that falls on my land?" Correct. That's what I thought. I've heard that, but it just—it's so absurd that it's, I just have to keep hearing it. Eventually, it'll sink in, you know. I, I think the point is they don't want anybody stealing all the water. I, I get it. <laughs> I mean, I get it. They don't want, you know, some greedy cranberry guy to get a bigger crop or anything like that because he controlled the pond. But so, um, the guy with his cucumbers in his backyard has to suffer. <laughs> yes, miss. Go ahead, Veronica. Yeah, give suffer. you back the floor. <laughs> so um, with the drainage, I just wanted to be sure that the drainage was still going over to the original intended area. I certainly am not qualified to say whether or not uh, your changes uh, it's actually, you know, between having the rainwater collection and having this uh, crushed stone trench with the perforated pipe, where, so we're eliminating, you know, we're eliminating the runoff that would, it's a further reduction, basically. Okay. But yes, it, it goes into that, into that basin, into the stone trench, and it comes out here, and it, it, that's the end of the swale. So it's still going to end up in the intended area that was originally approved. Yes. So that's, okay. Yep. What's the reason for the sidewalk? Um, you just want more sidewalk? Well, it's the front of the building. If we put one there now, if there's uh, if there's an ability in the future to, to put additional parking, the sidewalk would already be there. Um, okay. So not so, so to avoid a lot of wasted time. Pretty much seems as though we got a consensus that it's. Are you satisfied? Yeah, I'm satisfied. Okay. I think so I think the, the board has all echoed. Uh, do you have anything that you Just want to? Just a question. Is there going to be a gate at, in the fence at the corner where the yes. sidewalk goes to? Yes. So you can have an opening. So you're going to be able to get around. So there'll be a fence at the corner that comes out to, the, to that point. It's actually on those plans. Gate right here. 
How about on the other side? On the, the other, other side. So on that corner of the building, it comes oh, off and goes over towards the boat, the wooden boat um, factory. Right. And then comes along that that property line. So all of that pad is is enclosed in a fence as well inside the fence. But you are you going to be able to get from that front sidewalk through the fence through a gate in the fence to get back to the pad? No. So part of that sidewalk, there's actually an egress coming out. So instead of pouring a single pad, we, we decided to do a sidewalk in, in case we needed to add parking when we do our addition in the back. Okay. So it's more for future than it is to get it's to for that future. Path. And we were already going to have to pour concrete there for the for the exit door for a pad. So we decided just to pour the the sidewalk. You got a 10 yard there. truck coming and you only need nine yards unless you put that <laughs> sidewalk in. I understand. Okay, so um, do we, we need we need to vote that we believe that this is a minor modification. So I'd like a member to make a motion that they believe that this is a minor modification, and I'd like to hear a second. I'll make a motion um, to grant um, Thatcher Lane as a minor modification. I got a motion by Veronica Debanese that this is considered a minor modification, and she's also further motioning to grant. Do I have a second? Richard Semple, I second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You're done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Passes 400 for the record. The next one up, 22-11 Walmart, Cranberry Highway, and Seth F. Toby Road, release of landscape performance bond. Who's here to speak about that? Nobody good, we keep their money. Next. Uh, Three. Just, uh, just, uh, <laughs> it doesn't work that way, huh? Just a report on that one. The, uh, they've made a request for the $20,000 that was put aside for uh, performance uh, standards uh, on the landscape plan for uh, make sure it grows as appropriate. Uh, we have to pull the plan, the landscape plan out of the archives to actually go out and review and see if the landscape- So nobody's had a chance to go review and you probably want to send, um, what's his name? Mr. Rowley. Charlie, right? Yes. Mr. Rowley, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, continue this until that has been had a chance to happen. Exactly. And you're gonna contact Mr. Rowley and yeah. have an answer for us at our next meeting. Exactly. Um, so we don't need a motion. We're just gonna continue number two, and we're moving on to number three, nineteen sixteen J Donegan Company Wayham Marketplace, release of performance bond, two fourteen twenty four nineteen and twenty four twenty seven Cranberry Highway, for Seth. Seth F. Toby Road, map 85, lots 1004A, 1004D, and 1006. Before I try to keep their money, do you have something to tell me about that one too? Yeah, this is for a $175,000 insurance bond. Uh, they've, you've reviewed the as-built plan and okayed it, approved the uh, construction as, as built. So that it's appropriate now to release the, uh, the performance bond. And we don't need Mr. Rowley to go out there and bless it or genuflect or anything. It's just a matter of us saying, okay, you can have your dough back. Exactly. I'm all for that. I think Walmart's a good neighbor to Wareham. Anybody on the board have any questions or comments? No. Um, I do. So all of everything has passed in terms of permits and everything is... They're done. They've built they've, it as... They did what they're supposed to do and we're holding 175 grand of their money. And they'd like to use it to buy paper towels and toilet paper. All right, that's a lot of toilet paper, but they might need to stock up. Get that inventory back in the store. Okay, uh, that was Veronica's question. Um, again, we need a, a motion and a um, vote to give them back their money. I'd like a member of the board to make a motion that we give them back their performance bond. Of $175,000. $175,000, a performance bond. I make a motion to give back their money. Richard Simple has moved to give 
Walmart back their $175,000 performance bond. Do I have a second? I second. Christopher has seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 It passes unanimously. They get their money back. Okay, moving on. Number four. 29-16, Keith Amato requests for a one-year extension of a special permit for 312 Wonset Avenue, map 16, lot 1007. And I see somebody sitting down. Could you identify yourself and give us your st sad story? Uh, Brian Grady, GAF Engineering here for Mr. Amato. Uh, he's looking for an extension. Yeah, he suffered some setbacks this year, even prior to COVID. Um, had a problem with a tenant uh, going and uh, having to get them evicted. Uh, uh, required uh, $10,000 to reinvest in the property to make it habitable again. And then COVID hit and he was furloughed uh, for a period of months. Um, he's back at work. Uh, so looking to get this extension uh, for one more year and hopefully he can get this project accomplished. Um. Before I open this up to the board, correct me if I'm wrong, but my memory is that Mr. Amato lives in California and he came and asked for us an extension once before. Yes. Because he's he had a long state. distance problem. It, it, part of the problem for His the prior year was uh, working long distance with contractors. Uh, he had a problem with a contractor, non-performance. Uh, trying to get things done from out of state. Yes, that's that I want to go on the record so that Mr. Amato gets telegraphed the message that as chair I feel as though he may be stringing us along so he can market the property and that's kind of bothering me. Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect my vote tonight, but it will affect my vote in the future. I think this might be the last time I'd be willing to grant an extension. COVID bonds, I mean I hate to see a guy spend 10 grand to tear a building down if that's what he had to do, I feel kind of bad for him. But, you know, it's sunny in California and we're in Massachusetts. And this has been drug along long enough, in my opinion. Well, I that said, I'm going to open it up to the board. Any questions, Mr. Semple? No, sir. Mr. Conti. So, so I guess I'm not familiar with what the um, special permit was The original was permit was granted to rip the place down and build a new one. Last year, they came back and said, the guy lives in California. It's hard to rip a building down long distance. We listened to his story. We really didn't think he was commuting from California to rip it down, but we gave him a year. He did nothing in the year. Now he's coming back and saying, the tenant's giving me a hard time. I want another year. So I, still I tend standing. to give him the year, but I tend to warn him that he's not getting another one. Maybe That's should, my position. Maybe I should explain the, uh, the special permits are only good for two years under our regulations. So you have to complete the project that you, you get approved under a special permit within that two year time frame, or ask for an extension for a year. So, so it's been um, two years or has it been three years? He's now, in his, he's now looking for his fourth year under this permit if I get it correctly. I think this would be the third extension request. Third if, extension, if so that would be yeah. two years plus mm -hmm. three one year extensions. He's now going into his fifth year on this kind of amplifies my position you know nothing and nothing against GAF or you I'm just I want to telegraph it right back to mr. I, I will Amato. pass that along yep I, I, I knew you would this was an application <laughs> from 2016 okay. we, we like to be we like to be a, a board that helps people accomplish their goals but we don't want to be a board that gets used that's all I, I agree I don't have okay, any questions I don't Okay, so again, I'm going to um, seek an, uh, a motion from one of the members to grant the extension. Um, I'd like the motion to possibly be, have some, I, I mean, I, my suggestion would be that we grant him a one-year extension and we put right in our granting that it's for one year and one year only and there'll be no further extensions. That would be my preference if I was making the motion. I totally agree. I'll move that we give him the extension for one more year, and that's it. No more extensions. Okay. The motion's been made by Mr. Conti to grant a one-year extension and one year only with prejudice against f future extensions. If something doesn't happen in 12 months, we don't want him coming back in front of this board. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second. I have first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you for your time, sir.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Jim, can you clarify something for me? Go ahead. The, um, the performance bomb, when you released that, you stated that you were leasing it to Walmart, but I believe it was... Was it, was it Donegan? Donegan? Did I say Walmart and mean Donegan? Did we give Donegan Walmart's money or did we give Walmart Donegan's money? Hopefully we gave Donegan Donegan's money. give them their money. own money. Donegan <laughs> okay. had the 175. I the did say Walmart. For the record, let's, you know, just for the record and for Sonia, now that she's probably listened to the tape and typed everything wrong, she can go back and correct it. Thank you, Veronica. I should have mentioned it sooner, but. Okay. We could go faster, but then we'd be half as fast. Um, public hearings. Number one, 14-20, Barbara Malliott, care of Bill Bayshant Builders, Inc., Variance and our Special Permit, 17 South Boulevard, Map 1, Lot 65. Hi there. How are you this evening? And Attorney Morton. Mario, right there. Attorney Martin. Morton. M-O-R-T-O-N, sorry, like Morton. the salt. I'm going to arrange yeah. it, pause. That's excellent, yep. That's right there. All right. Hi everyone. So today we're seeking a variance. Um, in your materials, you should see the actual letter of intent that we prepared. If you'd like to follow, if you, if you hold a minute, let me read the. Uh, I thought he read we're it. We're going to read it into the. We're going to read it into the record. We're going to open it up and, uh, and and you understand that there's only four members here and only and it only takes one nay to get you yes, bounced sir. out of here for two years. Okay. I figured you did, but yes. I wanted it on the record. Yes, that Notice of public hearing. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on August 12, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. in room 320 of the Wareham Multi-Service Center, 48 Marion Road, Wareham, Mass. 02571. To consider peti petition number 14-20 for a special permit and or variance from the requirements of Article 13, Section 1335 and Article 6, Table 622 under the Wareham Zoning Bylaws for Barbara Mello at care of Bashant Builders Incorporated of 9 Tyler Avenue, Wareham, Mass. 02538. Proposing to construct a garage to the existing dwelling at 17 South Boulevard, Wareham, Mass. Assessors Map 1, Lot 65 in the OV2 Zoning District. Okay, Excellent. go ahead again. Say your Hi. name again and, and you can pull the mask cool. down okay. and let, let you, we can, I can read your lips better than okay. I can hear you. Great. Hi, I'm attorney Morton. I'm representing Ms. Malloy. That's how you pronounce her last name. Um, she owns the property located at 17 South Boulevard. And I direct your attention over to the board so you can see where it is. Do you, can everyone see that? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, so. It's right at the corner of Pleasant and South, right overlooking beautiful onset. Is that um, the old hotel or is that? It's it is it's not an old no it um actually has the peak on it oh okay, um, we have that, some more okay. rendering so you'll be able to I see it. it i know which one it is Got yeah. it. um so my client is a former air force um nurse and she really fell in love with onset um this property is a vic beautiful victorian as you can see overlooking i would argue one of the most beautiful places in in wareham that we have she applied for a building permit and you can see in the denial letter, which should be exhibit, exhibit B, I believe, there were a couple um, things that the commissioner was looking that there needed a special permit or a variance. I'd like to direct your attention first um, to the impervious surface variance that he's speaking about because we actually had changes in the plans to be able to fix that. So in the original plans, it was called for actually a cement um, driveway, kind of pavers. Um, and the current, if you look on the, your big plan, it talks about the, the, should be in the packet, the site plan. You take a look at the zoning table. So let me just bear with me a minute sure. while I open my plan up too. We're in 06, um, we're on to village two. That's the district we're in here. And on that, you should be able to see the table, the table that discusses um, so the this percentage. This is the same thing that's on the board right here. Yep. This one's just it's colored. Pretty in color. This one, this one's in color. Um, if I may, sure. they've got the previous plan. The current plan has a revision date of 27 and it's a full 24 by 36. 
Okay. So we got a we got a date June 17, and you say there's a new plan that's dated. Yeah. There's a revision date on. Oh, there's another one yet. Yeah. yeah, I believe. Do you have June or yeah, do you yeah, have August? Yeah, it's date 720, so we got the right plan. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I think I had. They got the I wrong plan. I got the right one. Okay. So once in my life, I'm the one that got the right one. <laughs> so the change. I won't let that happen again. Don't okay. worry. So we wanted to make sure that um, that was handled as far as um, we, we understand that Onset has small lots. This is already a non-conforming um, lot like most of the lots. Um, so the impervious service my plan um, actually it was 50 it's 51 51.7 percent currently and we changed it to use this is my prop <laughs> this grading at this um, this driveway which you can use if you're familiar with that um, to put to make it to so the runoff and it would be actually reduce the impervious um, nature so it's gonna actually reduce it 36 percent so we're not seeking a variance on that because we're actually reducing it, we're not um, raising it. And this is the driveway area, and that is. Um, do you want to point? Do you want to point to it? Yeah, yeah okay. do, point. Yeah. Point. Um, uh, For the record, my name is Doug Schneider, consulting engineer and land surveyor. Uh, in case the in case the microphone couldn't hear it, it's Doug Schneider doing the pointing for us. Uh, on this on this view, what you see in blue is the current A driveway. Okay. And what you see in blue over here will be the, the pervious pavers. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna excavate out the pavement. That's right. And you're gonna put that stuff in with P stone or dirt or grass or something. Yeah, I don't I don't know if the actual material is determined yet, yeah, but yeah. it will reduce. I, I've it. seen the stuff yep. used before. I, I yeah, get what pretty, it does. It's pretty nice top of the line. It keeps it solid and it keeps it from getting muddy and nasty and ruddy, but it, it but it allows water to go through. That's right. So so I guess I just wanted to draw to that first one because um, we're not seeking a variance on that because we're actually reducing it. Um, so on the denial letter, that's not something that would be a part of um, a variance we're looking at. So you see the denial letter, the impervious. He had, he had three reasons for saying no, and one yep. of them was impervious surface. That's right. So we can check that off yep. and satisfied and, and take your word for it because you'd never <laughs> fib to us. Absolutely Thank not. You. Oh, okay. So the biggest um, reason that we're here is really that we are going to be asking for a variance as far as the maximum building coverage. So we are seeking for the current shed, and you can see that on the plan, to be removed and for a garage to be attached. Now this garage is gonna have um, obviously a garage and a second floor. The second floor is not going to be a bedroom. It is going to be a bathroom and a walk-in closet. And that's something that Mrs. Molloy, we've talked about. Um, currently there's only one bathroom. Well, the house is gutted now, but there was only one bathroom. So to have a master bathroom upstairs for visitors and then a closet. So I'm looking at the plan again. The blue, you're going to rip out the pavement. The green, you're going to rip out the pavement and the shed and put a garage in it in its place with a second story with a bathroom and a closet. That's right. Yep. And we they're going to come in off of Pleasant Avenue, which is a one-way street, if I got it correctly. Yes. They're going to come down Pleasant Avenue. They're going to take a left turn into their own driveway, and then they're going to take another left turn into their garage, disappear. What was that, what was that detective that used to park his car in his living room? <laughs> so we also did, um, the builder, Mr. Bashan, did talk to um, the fire department regarding this to make sure that everything was okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was handled. I know that's often a concern. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of the parking situation. Not yes. that I live in Onset, but, I, yeah. you know, you can't help but live in this town and hear the moans and groans about what goes out, on out there with parking. Sure. And one of the things that Miss Malloy is actually a grandmother, five grandchildren, two adult children. So this is going to allow her to have a parking space, a garage, which we know with the elements and onset wind, rain, and then be able to have visitors over and grandchildren in that parking space. And other than that, the, the structure is the same. We have uh, renderings that actually it's are not, pretty. You're helpful. not adding bedrooms. You're not. You just. You're just taking out a, a shed and putting in a garage and 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 a, a walk-in closet. We're, we're taking down the shed, which is practically falling down at this I, point. I, I, I've seen it. <laughs> we're taking that down, 
adding an attached garage on so that as I get towards 70, which is not too far off, um, I can walk out into my garage, get in my car without slipping in the driveway, which I actually did this past winter. Um, but over the garage will only be a walk-in closet and a bathroom. There's no extra bedroom going in up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I like, I know, I'm familiar with the property. I, I, I personally think it's a nice improvement. Um, I think the density of the building down in that neighborhood merits what you're going to do. So um, you won't get a lot of resistance from me on a side note. What you do for the Air Force? Pardon? What did you do for the Air Force? I was in the Air Force Nurse Corps. Air Force Nurse Corps? Nurse Corps. I'm sorry. You said that earlier. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So within your materials as well, and we don't have to spend a lot of time with it, but there's a lot of support. I think we have six or seven abutters letters. One's from Cat Jones um, of Onset Bay Association. Um, Barbara's been very involved with that um, since moving um, and being in Wareham. So there's obviously a lot of support, and people want to see these historical homes restored to their glory. Um, so you can see the renderings here. Um, it looks like you're doing a nice project. Yeah. I want to, um, if unless you have some compelling evidence, there are questions. To, I want to um, uh, move to my board. Um, I've been going to the left, Richard. I'm going to um, turn to Christopher first this time. Do you have any questions? Um, I don't have any questions. I think, it, I think it looks great, and I think it looks like it's going to be a nice improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Veronica, do you, you, you usually do? Come on. You can't, don't do, let us and down. I, I'm, I'm not going to disappoint. No, I didn't think <laughs> you would. Um, so I'm looking at the existing shed. It looks like um, you will be increasing the nonconformity because it the moment there's nothing existing against that street but the 22 foot shed so you're proposing to increase that to i don't what is the dimension of the right do you have garage? the dimension of the shed Doug? how big the shed is yep or, or the garage garage 16 by 22 is yep. the garage what is it 16 by 22 that's not by 22 so. i think that's the shed right or is that 22 it's is the garage Oh, the shed's 9 by 12, the 22 is the garage. 16 by 22 is the garage. Okay, all right. So the current coverage, the nonconformity is 25.1%, and we're going to 29. Yes. So if that... I'm can, sorry, what were the numbers again you're 20, going from? So it, in our district right now, 20% is what it, we're supposed to be at. It's already nonconforming at 25.1%. We're seeking to 29%. So a four percent increase. I see somebody coming down. And he's be, he's on his knees. Oh, I, I know. Are you going to propose? Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> like to name name share for the record. This is the architect. This is the, the master. My name is John Gennaro. Hi, John. Um, so Doug Schneider just brought to my attention or reminded me that part of the garage is also existing house. So we're That's taking gonna, part of the house yeah. and all of the shed, and we're basically squaring it off. I, I noticed that, okay. but thank you for thank you for <laughs> clarifying that for everybody's sake. So what is the EXBH that's still that's there too? You getting rid of, rid of that? What is that little thing? Bulkhead. Oh, that's a bulkhead. Oh, okay. That will be filled in, so that it's yeah. part of the garage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. So you're, you know, obviously the setback is something that's going to increase nonconformity too, not just the, the coverage of the lot. But, but I think actually it's, it's not um, detrimental to the neighborhood. So um, I'd be inclined to, to say, yeah, it's a good, good thing. Um, I don't want to take too much time, but I think it's important to read into the record. I think uh, the applicant... <clears throat> and their representatives have done a good job. <clears throat> and in the bundle that they've presented to us, I see one, two. Yeah, I think there's actually three, another one I have that I could read to you. I was four, five, six. I see six letters yeah, um, from people that didn't want to come here. They just wanted <laughs> to um, be on the record. And this one's in favor. And the next one is in favor. Oh, and this is a neighbor and an abutter. And this is another neighbor and a and close by a butter and this one is see no any reason uh, in favor um they're given their name their address big long winded description and <clears throat> ending with i think should be allowed another one here says to whom it may concern and it's a big long um uh, too much to read into the record 
I do hope you also see the positive impact. I see nothing negative in any of these letters. I want that in the record. And this, this final one here, <clears throat> although, albeit shorter, the final sentence says, I fully support blah, blah, blah. Sir. So I want that on the record that um, before I continue turning to my fellow board members, is there anybody here from the public that would like to be heard on this matter tonight? Either for or against. And again, I repeat Did for you come the record. Forward? Pardon me? You have somebody in the back. But, uh, please come forward, state your name. Um, for the record, there's a microphone over there. If it's not live, um, somebody will make it live. Tell us who you are and what, what you got to say. Amy Salvador Fantoni, we are an immediate abutter. Amy, you're an immediate writer. Go ahead. And uh, I just want to voice my support for the project. Another supporting. That's seven. She's the one at butter right behind. Seven Barbara. to zero so far. Okay. Thank you for coming up and stating that. Some others will, took the time to write it. You actually took the time to be here. Yeah. What? Nurse, I'm not worse. <laughs> I'm better. I'm sorry? You never heard the saying, nurse, I'm worse? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you. You've put a good presentation together. I have no further questions. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Richard, I never turned. All right. Uh, uh, Planner, do you have any comments? Additions? Yes, I do. I just okay, go for it. just want to make a clarification here. In the uh, letter the, uh, from the building department, the denial letter, it references section 1335 procedures. Uh, which is incorrect because it should be 1353 yeah. because the, uh, the, of the uh, garage extending the non-conforming setback in the front. Is that a Scrivener's error? Is that a, is that the guy that wrote the letter? Did he just put down the wrong number? Did the dyslexia is acting up again, I guess. Okay. So instead of 1353, he put 1335. He got, to, he got his towards listed. Okay, so I'm correcting it on my copy um, for the record. And so we're, we're really here to decide on two matters because we've already addressed one by ripping out the driveway. Yes. So we're here to decide um, that you're going to make a, a change or expansion on a pre-existing non-conforming structure, and do we want to allow that? And the other thing we're deciding on that you're – Increasing the allowable lot coverage. Building, building coverage. The building coverage building, from 25.1% to 29. So, so from what to what again? It's currently 25.1%. And you're going, you're going up 29, 4, 4 points. Yeah. Um, which in my personal opinion is minor compared to the um, improvement you're making to the property and the neighborhood. Um, I, I, I can see that yeah. seven neighbors would much rather see her um, taking a bath and walking into her closet than having her shed <laughs> well, the house continue to, to deteriorate. The house, the condition was was uh, pretty rough. It's, it's gutted now. There's a yeah, lot, but it's of, a lot of work structure. to it's But it's great. beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's, so. a, it's a great it's, spot. It's a beautiful structure, and the outside is absolutely pristine. When we gutted it, um, it's pretty clear that it needs significant restructuring. So if I'm making that much of an investment there, I really want to be able to live in it year-round. Yeah. And so are you buying it subject to us saying yay, or have you already no, bought it? No, I've already bought it. I, I so if we say it. no, you'll just keep spending money and not live there? I mean. <laughs> oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy it, Barbara. <laughs> Beautiful. You've got to be careful what you say to me. you <laughs> learn that. I know. No, I, um, I lost my train of thought now. It's senioritis. That's all right. Um, senioritis. Um, I, I'm in sales, and something they taught me early on, when it seems like they're going to say yes, stop talking. Um. <laughs> No, I just I love the piece of property. I love the house. I found it by accident, and that's really where I'd like to be. Yep, and I think we'd like to have you there. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn to my board again and ask if I can get a favorable motion for this application with standard conditions. You want to close the hearing first. Would somebody move to close the hearing to the public? Just say so moved. So moved. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor of closing the hearing to the public say aye. 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 Okay. Now I need a motion, preferably to approve the application or grant the relief sought in the application with standard conditions. 
and you make a finding that it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. You want to make that finding so we can make it a variance and not a um, make it a special permit. Make it a special variance. permit, and not a variance. Correct. Well, don't they need a variance on the um, lot coverage? They're already non-conforming. They're pre-existing non-conforming. So it's so it's a special it's permit. Expanding, expanding the non-conformity. So. Extending the no so you want to call it a special permit? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Listen to that lawyer go. <laughs> of course it is. Okay, so I need a member of the board to move that they find this non-detrimental to the neighborhood and, and in so it enables us to make this motion in the form of a special permit. So I'll make a motion to um, you make move a motion forward as a special permit. I don't believe it's okay. a... You, find, you don't find it to be detrimental. detrimental to the okay. neighborhood. And... and um, do you second that? I second that. We have a first and a second to call to move on this as a special permit. All in favor say aye. 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 It passes unanimously. Now we can make a motion to grant relief to the applicant as requested. Would um, anybody like to make that motion? Richards. I make a motion to grant relief. With, spe with standard conditions. With standard conditions. Per per and we're Perfect. gonna grant relief under the first two sections of the denial letter. Third right. one has been satisfied. Thank you. And um, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, that looks to me like you got a four zero zero. Special permit. The awesome. only thing you need to do now is leave before you lose. I have, well, I have another one. <laughs> Thank you all very much Thank for coming in. Nice much. presentation. Thank you for your service, ma'am. Thank you. And when you sit there, you know that they'll be coming out of Kingston with heavies and they'll be doing touch and goes and Otis <laughs> right over your house. My husband used to do touch it's and goes. It's not Otis, it's Cape Cod, Joint Base Cape oh, Cod now, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not Otis? It's Force no longer Base. Otis, it's now Joint Base Cape Joint Cod. Joint Base, okay. You got the Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and the Boy Scouts down there. <laughs> and, oh. and Civil Air Patrol. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Thank yeah. you very much. Enjoy your time in Onset. I hope we, I'm sure we'll enjoy you as a new neighbor to the, to the Thank town. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Just continuing this next one. We're going to sign this. Remember in my letter to you two guys, they said don't run out until we sign them. This is the thing we're going to sign. And um, we're granting it. And, and are we going to, are you guys going to fill this in I'll later? Fill it in. You'll fill it in for us? Yeah. Just right now, standard, I'm gonna, I'm standard conditions. Oh, I just want to talk to Barb for okay. just five minutes. I, I'm just going to continue this one. So is there an appeal period for We the still have John. I know you're not leaving, but we still have John. Continue. And, and we'll give me one minute yep. to finish up some business here, and we'll do that. Can Thank you. Can I ask a procedural question? Sure. Okay. So is there the 20-day appeal yes. period for the special? Okay. Yes, there is. Okay. We'll file this tomorrow, so it'll be 20 days. Excellent. 21 okay. days afterwards, you can pick it up. Okay, excellent. Do I, do I need to sign as the clerk or just as the chair? You're the acting chair. Yeah, but do I need to sign the clerk line too? Do I sign it twice? No, you don't. I just leave it and, and, and okay. I often wondered about that, you know? We don't have any uh, a, a vice clerk. Um, so while we're signing that, and we should uh, anybody that's got anything to do with that last that last applicant, and I think that would be. You don't have to return the plans. We got copies. All this, all this. I can go. They can all go in the trash. Recycle. Recycle. Oh, we don't trash them. That's what we think. And what about throw away um, my be beautiful presentation? <laughs> what about um, site plan review approval for zoning board March 13th? What's this one here? Um, special permit. What am I looking at there? Oh, yeah, the that trash too, or did that need to get filed? Yeah, back in. Okay. So this can go. Uh, this can go recycled. I'll put that on the floor. As a little bit of bookkeeping, um, we still have one more on the agenda here, which is 8-20 um, John T Churchill variance, 2850 Cranberry Highway. 
map 129, lot 1007, and the applicant has elected to continue to come back in front of a five-member board. Yes, and he welcomes anyone to walk the lot as discussed. So. Do you guys hear that? If we're, we're talking about across from the Elks down on Cranberry Highway where it's one way. Got it? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, so so I, we, so I, I drove by today, but I thought he was, ta I didn't know that the lot was, I thought he was talking about his office. No. Talk about a lot. It's, it's right next to it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and I actually walked the lot. It was wooded and I had ticks on me afterwards, but it's worth it because you can actually see the topography on what he's trying to do. So um, anyone, he's, he's welcome. You could, um, I think Ken, I gave you the information. He's, he should be around next week. So. Pretty easily accessible. You don't yeah. need to go. He you said can, he, anyone could go walk on it. Just so. go walk on it. If anybody right gives, next you, to gives you any right trouble, across tell the Elks. Yeah, oh, I, I took a walk. You. I went down there today. I yeah. pulled in there and it, it, there's a lot of vegetation and stuff. To, yeah, to I was go, climbing through trees to get in, so yeah, I, I didn't really duck. Ways. Yeah, I didn't duck. I did see where the heron run was, and I did walk behind there where we had a lot of sand piled up. But you really couldn't no. get into that area without diving under the vegetation, yeah. and I, I didn't really um, do that. I guess. Okay. Yeah, I would. He would be happy to walk with you. He, there's a path he took me through. So, um, and that fill was from a cesspool that he filled in. That was there. So. So that's continued. Okay. We're continued. Great. And thank you. You're welcome. Thank I, you. Can thank I you. just ask one question? Sure. And the driveway, I see the driveway. So where are they exiting when they leave this? It looks like it's going through. They are exiting Cranberry Highway. So There's going to be a curb cut. Curb cut. They're going to have There's to There's going to be a curb yeah. cut. And he did have some renderings done. I don't know if that got in the package, but he can bring it next time of act the actual structure that he's proposing. Now, there was something that I wanted to bring up tonight, and I could, I'll be for the life of me if I can remember what it is right now. As soon as I get in the car to go home, I will. Um, Ken, before we close the meeting, um, can you give us any updates on what's happening with the um, potential changes to the bylaws regarding drive throughs uh, There's going to be a hearing on uh, next Monday, the 17th, by the planning board. It's going to be an online Zoom meeting. Okay where the, uh, we'll go through the public Thank hearing you. process uh, with uh, explanation of all the zoning articles, uh, which includes the uh, drive-through. Uh, right now, the uh, proposal is a, uh, a change in the, in the use table of table 320 to uh, list drive-through restaurant uh, as a special permit in the CS district. It's, a, it's a, um, acceptable in the CG district, and this would be the CS district that is allowed in as well. So we're just, we're just increasing where it would be. The proposal is to change the bylaw such that <clears throat> anybody that wants to drive through needs a special permit granted by this board. That's correct, and there's and it's all gonna, the standards it's in It's going to be extended from just um, commercial strip to... General commercial. General commercial to commercial strip. Correct. And are there any other commercial districts that would be appropriate to add it to, or should we peel this onion one layer at a time? Uh, the only other one is the industrial district. Okay, and I, I heard lots of opposition to that when I said, why not let them have a drive through restaurant in the industrial district? Um, so I won't belabor that point. So the drive throughs are on the agenda. What, what else, what other bylaw changes or proposal in, in, in general? Just. Bob, we got a couple of new members and sure uh the the big one is going to be the wareham village wv1 district are you guys uh, have you heard anything about that veronica um do you mind if i so what they're proposing to do is they're proposing to um make the zoning in downtown wareham wareham village one <clears throat> slightly more generous to encourage development they're going to allow uh, proposed allowing to increase the height of the buildings that could be built and as well as the density. So as the bylaws currently state, if you take an existing structure and you wanna do mixed use with residential in it, you need a thousand square feet per unit. But if you were going from raw land, you'd need 2000 square feet per unit. I'm giving this as an example. Under the new proposal, you'd only need a thousand either way. Um, am I 
am I misquoting or am I about right? You're, you're about right. Okay. I'm just trying to give my general, you know, and, and the height would change from, I think, from 40 feet to 60 feet. 65. 65. Wonderful. So if you figure 10 feet per story, you could feasibly get a six-story building on Main Street in Wareham overlooking Merchant's Way. Um, I don't think the Marriott or the Sheraton are going to come next week and say hallelujah, but they certainly wouldn't come if the, zo the bylaw wasn't changed. And <clears throat> Wareham Village wouldn't be a terrible place to have a mixed-use multi-story build, in, in my personal opinion, um, be it um, transit or residential. Uh, if you look at, for example, which is why I'm for this, if you look down in New Seabury at the end of 151 at the New Seabury Rotary, that's exactly what they've got there. They've got retail on the lower level and they've got uh, residential use on the up, upper levels. That's a, it's a nice village concept. What else are they doing? Uh, we have a, a, a proposal to uh, clarify the definition of a multifamily dwelling, a, uh, an attached, what an attached unit is. There's a redrafting of uh, Article 11, the signs, following the recommendation of the State Attorney General's Office. And there's more, a- More restrictive, uh, less restrictive, changing up some words, what are they doing? Well, not being so specific to uh, uses of the, uh, who actually uh, has the sign up, but just the, the size and the dimensions of, uh, and, uh, of signs within zoning districts. It can't be by the content of the sign by the Supreme Court decision. It can only be um, in accordance with a, a district-wide sign regulation. It can't be within the content of the sign. It, it can't, you can't regulate the content of a sign. We can't tell them what the sign says. We can only tell them how big it can be. Right. Okay. But, I mean, we, certain it, things we couldn't allow. We could not allow, but... <laughs> I'm sure there's some language we could prohibit. <laughs> there, there's, um, there's also a, uh, uh, a, a change in a setback for a, a marijuana testing lab from a school. Uh, this would actually be to allow Smithers Vincent to uh, install a, uh, a marijuana testing, product testing lab in their laboratory, their research facility at, at, on Main Street beside Deca School. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that was, uh, I saw that, yeah, that's, a t they're gonna, that's, I, I, I always called that Springborn down back in there, but it's Smithers something, it's. Smithers Vincent. Everybody know where he's talking about? It was about yeah, 20 okay. years ago. <laughs> Pardon me? I said Springborn was a while ago. Spring, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a while. Uh oh, I've been around a while. while. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, and. And, and, and there, was w there was one more. Go ahead. Um, Ken, Go ahead. about that, isn't that setback requirement a state law? It's a state regulation, but under that regulation, it allows that the community can uh, reduce the setback distance. I thought you could only increase it. You can reduce it? No, they can reduce it. Generally speaking, we, you can be more restrictive, but then we've already We've already done that. But that's, that's uh, less restrictive. But this is being less restrictive. That's right. And... and it has. We if that. we say yes in town meeting, it still has to get the blessing of the attorney general. So we already did this at the Tremont Nail Factory. Yeah. So what, what, you brought up the term marijuana. Are they doing anything to the marijuana bylaw, or are they leaving it the way it is? Only the setback requirement. That, Only uh, the setback requirement. So is that going to be discussed at next Monday's meeting? Yes, it will. And is the public going to be allowed to speak, or are we just going to be able to listen? No, the public is allowed to speak at a public hearing. Okay. Because I, I say, for the record, if anybody watches these things when they're 2 o'clock in the morning and they can't sleep, or to my fellow board members, I, I still struggle with our current bylaw um, having unnecessary language in it and unnecessary restrictions. I don't get it. McDonald's and Wendy's can habitate across the street from each other and neither one of them fears the other. 
McDonald's doesn't feel as though Wendy's going to take all their business, and Wendy doesn't feel. Some people like um, McDonald's, and some like Wendy's, and some people go to Wendy's and get a chili, and go to McDonald's and get a fish sandwich. Oh, go to Subway. Uh, 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 yeah, and 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 I don't find that to be a problem. I wouldn't care if there were three marijuana dispensaries in the same building with three separate entrances. If one guy's got a better product, he's going to get the customer. And if somebody's got a cheaper product, he's going to get that customer. And why we need to have a bylaw that says they can't be within 1,500 feet of each other, um, it just, to me, it smacks of reefer madness. Um, you, you know, I just don't see the need for being that restrictive. If we're going to allow three dispensaries, I don't care if all three of them are in the same building. That's, that's me personally. That doesn't mean I'm right. That's just my personal opinion, and I'm expressing it, and, and I'm sharing it with the board because I think that, you know, we got a situation. I, I see it on Facebook. I see it uh, on different social media sites. I see people yelling and screaming um, about the one and only um, dispensary operating in town right now, and, and those people were kind of like um, ushered into that spot. There was no other place for them to go. But yet we complain, our bylaws put us there. Our bylaws put them there. They tried to provide relief from this board, and the neighbors came and said, no, we don't want to give you no relief. We like it miserable, and we love something to complain about. That's the way I took it. Um, I just don't see the need for us to have... I don't know the difference between having a marijuana dispensary and a liquor store and, and the zoning, why it has to be an industrial zone, why it can only be in the same zone as a school and it can't be in the same zone as a drug store or a package store or a retail establishment is beyond my, is beyond my ability to imagine. It's just beyond my ability. They're selling something and, and they should be able to be you know, right next to TJ Maxx, in my opinion. That's my opinion. So I'm going to bring that up next Monday night to the planning board if I get a chance to speak. And if anybody else has strong feelings on that, I'd appreciate the input. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, lastly, uh, although it's been withdrawn, there was a, uh, on the list is a, a new hospitality, recreation, and entertainment district to allow uh, certain large-scale commercial development north of 495 and Route 25. Um, if you're tired of, of solar farms as is this, a, as this a the, this the gambling casino? The this is the race track, track? The horse track. Um, we're, we're not going to... Uh, th that's been withdrawn. It's been withdrawn? It's been withdrawn. It'll be picked up later. We'll have a special meeting for it on its own. So the developer has withdrawn... He's, he's right, it, officially, right now, there's no application to put a track. Well, there wasn't an application before. It was. It was a preliminary. Yeah, it's preliminary. Still, it's it's got a little ways to go. This is a. Uh, and a it was zone, kind of, They're going to need this zone change if they're going to proceed. But. Yep. So we might make the not change. Really yet. Kind of like putting the making the making it possible to build taller buildings downtown. If we change the bylaw, we might attract such development. Correct. And uh, I get that. Um, I guess it was a horse track, was it, that they wanted to put in? It's a horse track. I mean, the other option Some, Somebody something... said they were putting the horse before the cart because some state law needed to change in order for it to happen. Is that correct or no? Yeah, it is. There's a, uh, a state law that has to be uh, changed that, to allow that to occur. So that could be part of the reason that they were... They're, less active at this point but it still wouldn't hurt us to they're, well they're still active they're just not ready for the, the zone change i get it time. and their, their idea was to build that with their own exit ramp off off of uh 25 isn't it it's that's not, if they had a category two uh, casino that's no longer part of this plan it's just it's not race, it's just a racetrack just the track oh, okay okay so they'd be using glen charlie road then to go in and out of that yeah, they'd be using Glen Charlie Road, some portion of it, depending on where the access is into the site. So that's going to change a lot of public opinion on that, or impact a lot of the public opinion anyway, I should say. Maybe not change. So, Ken, what was changed with the, mar the marijuana law to allow for Tremont? What was made less restrictive? 
Oh, the Tremont thing is dead. It was the Little People's College across the uh, river. But those, pe those people went away. They, they spent a bunch of money on the town's building and then they left. They spent a quarter million dollars on the, uh, the steel building, re-skinning re it and putting in new insulation and fixing up the drainage around it. So there's nothing over there right now? There's nothing in there now. I thought they were cultivating there. No, they fixed the building in hopes of being able to, they weren't going to ever cultivate. They were going to, well, they were going to manufacture it was, it was just production, it. production of, uh, of uh, mostly vapes. And so when the ban on, on vapes was put by the governor, their market dried up and they decided it wasn't worth the uh, time investing in Massachusetts. So they cut their losses and left. We got, to build, we got our building improved, but it's still vacant. I thought they were renting those out for people to uh, rent them like the industrial park. Well, they, it's, it, if you know somebody that wants to rent it, okay. send them to Ken. Just, I was talking to somebody who said that they were, they were moving in over there, so I didn't, I didn't know. I thought they would changed it and they were just... just yeah, that's, yeah let, me, let me know anybody who's interested in uh, space, industrial space, because we got a real nice one. Good, good place to make sales. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of changing the law um, to, to allow a particular company to do something. Just my thought, but. Well, it's not the law, but it is a bylaw, and I get, I get your position. Um, but I don't know if we're doing it to allow somebody or to encourage somebody. So we want to I mean, we're changing the bylaw. Well, we're proposing. I, guess I should say I wouldn't want to encourage that. I support the what's in place right now with the state, and I think it's important to protect our schools. So you, you, you'd be opposed to what's going on in, in Wayham Village, or being proposed for Wayham Village One to increase the uh, development downtown. I'm talking about the marijuana. I'm not talking. Oh, about okay. So there's certain about and certain safety. laws, certain businesses. You'd select which businesses. No, certain groups of people need to be protected, like children. That's what I'm talking about. I get it. You, you, is, you, is it. Is it? Is do you have to be 21 to consume it? Yes. I'm not saying I'm for or against marijuana, but I think we need to protect our population that can't protect themselves until they can make decisions on their own, and that, to me, is one of them. But. Well, this is this is a laboratory, and it's got like a, a teaspoon of, of of material coming in a couple of times a week. That's, that's tested in, a, in an enclosed laboratory under sterile conditions. And there's no exposure, there's nothing that comes outside that looks like anything like marijuana as a, as a, as a, as a retail shop would be. Nobody's going to be walking around down, down outside the uh, building and with black bags in their hand. Yeah, and there's no smell and all that. I mean, these are, right. those are definitely considerations in my mind that I wouldn't be. I got you. Smithers has been there for, um, maybe 50 years now. And uh, they uh, do food testing and uh, product research. They do a lot of testing too, don't they? Actually, the environmental testing, yeah. Actually, I, I was just thinking about the fact that, that that industrial shop is right next to a school because that in itself is a little, you know, what, you know, you know what I mean? Like what can be tested there what in, and all that being so close to. Um, well, I, I, I you're saying next to Deca School? Yeah, I've thought about that at before. Some point, at some point, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but what's Deca School going to be after we open up the new miner? I mean, my, sure my guess? They, I said somebody was going to sell it, but I don't think they can sell it because Deca's granted it to the town, right? There's a couple of things that we're looking at. We're looking at um, housing, economic development, uh, new uh, industrial space, and uh, a potential public sa safety complex. Those are the three top options right now being considered so, for the So site. the school wouldn't be, once we get a new school open, then that's probably no longer going to be It's going to be, be ripped school. down. Right. Well, I'm just saying, it's not going to, no longer will be a school. So. I was just wondering, I mean, is, uh, about like how other townships are zoned and set up and how common it is to have industri and industrial and educational uh, well, really close, like yeah, right, but but abutting each other. How, how old is Deacon's school? Division. Does anybody know how old Deacon School is? I don't know. Because I don't think it's 50 years old. 
going to be close to it, though. I don't think it's 50 years old. Yeah, and it's I, probably close to it. But, close but to they're it. about, you know, on the border. It's amazing it, how fast 50 years can happen after you're in 2020. You, you know, in the 20s, I was, um, in the 70s, I was 20, and now I'm in the 20s, and I'm in the 70s, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, I digress. but my point is, is that um, who was there first, the school or Springborn? I don't so know. you put a school next to an industrial use, and then you say the industrial use shouldn't be there. It's, it's like the I'm airport not, that I built next that, to... I'm not saying that. No, I, I, I'm well, I'm no, it, but it does get said. You know, it does get said, so... Um, just, I'm just wondering, just, like throwing yeah, it out. I don't know, is that typical? Because, I mean, safety and different issues that could come up. So, anyway. anyway, that's what's happening. All we need is a motion to adjourn, and we can all go home and... and um, oh, we can't just leave without that. We can't just leave without it. We're supposed to, you know, otherwise we'd be in, we'd be in session indefinitely. <laughs> a week session, We wow. could see, on, see each other on the street, and we could talk, and we could consider it an ongoing public meeting. But I don't think the town would like it very much. So I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to I adjourn. Second. And it's been seconded. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>